Stay tuned for tonight's adventure with the Fat Man. Okay, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day it is, I hope it's good to be where you are because I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Baltimore Fats, and this is Night of the Hunter. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> and so this one starts actually here with this Genghis Khan video from Quantum of Conscience. And now, along the way, subs have suggested uh, videos and other major channels to me along the way. And, you know, and I've often checked them out. But, you know, for me, you know, I'm very happy just playing in my Baltimore mud. <laughs> and, but of course, I also, you know, know I can't live in a bubble, right? And so I do check out some of these channels. And I'm still sub to, like, Conspiracy R Us and Rebel Without a Pause. And, you know, along the way... Um, Although I haven't seen much from him in a long time now, I guess, is uh, Static in the Attic. And, you know, I picked up auto detecting. You know, I pick up these channels, right? And someone has recommended Quantum of Conscience to me, more than one person, I believe, and, you know, or shared his videos to me. And so I subbed, and, you know, sure enough, finally a title came my way that I was really interested enough to sit down and watch the whole thing. And because when I read it, I was like, oh, it's Genghis Khan. Right? He's doing, like, the thing that I do on my channel with the uh, phonetic spelling of the titles. Uh, you know, I do it, of course, to mess with the uh, AI and the <laughs> and the algorithm, you know, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly why he felt he needed to do it here. I guess with the con being, you know, and, and the nature of the video is, a, you know, Genghis Khan is a con game because, you know, when I watched the video, I actually really enjoyed it. He does a great job tearing apart this Mongolian Empire story of the false narrative, right? He throws a few digs in there at the Tartarian crowd, which, <laughs> which I enjoyed, right? And so I thought it was a great video. <laughs> and I liked it, you know, and I, I left a comment, just a basic, very interesting, you know, uh, I wasn't about to get into it with him, but one thing I did take away from it was the feeling that, you know, when I needed to, when Mongolia was going to come my way, because it was going to someday, you know, I had a good reference point in this video, so I was happy to have watched it and everything, and, you know, and I saw, you know, of course, I'm getting my notifications, I saw the next day he put out this one, where he again uses the same sort of phonetic spelling for CV, Right. Um, but I saw its length and I was like, yeah, I don't I don't have the time that day. But then yesterday I took the intrepid Mr. X and a friend of his down to the park, the very park where I got my uh, <laughs> Baal mocking me photograph with the with the seven little aerial sun worshippers. <laughs> and it's not coincidental, maybe that it was at that park that I was listening to this podcast here, whatever you want to call this. <laughs> right. right. And so I was like, well, you know, I'll. I'll let the kids ride around, and I'll I'll give this a listen. I like that Mongolian video enough, and I'm kind of curious as to what his take on the CV is and what this only game is, you versus you, you know. <laughs> so I started listening, and then I started getting angry and angrier and angry. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I don't know that I've heard a more a more condescending, disrespectful, negligent almost dangerous uh, diatribe. I don't know what to call what I was listening to. Um, but, you know, in good conscience, I couldn't let Quantum of Conscience's comments here go, you know, without some form of rebuttal here. Um, and so here we go. We're going to go with like the first four minutes or so, I think. And, you know, I'm going to try to go point to point with them. But what really I... The thing that just struck me more than anything was how dumb he must think his audience is. You know, that's the thing that struck me more than anything. And so what I really want to call this video was Quantum of Conscience is a gatekeeper who thinks his audience is stupid. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. All right. But OK, so here we go with that. Right? Let's do it. Hey, guys, it's Matt. Hi, Matt. <laughs> um, this is important. OK. Uh, it really is. I'm going to go slow. This is... <laughs> he needs to go slow because this is important. Pretty much my final take on the <laughs> CV Cooties thing. And I don't know. I don't know how many times he. This is my final take. Well, not my final thing. You know, and he does that like three or four times throughout. <laughs> um, not final. I mean, I'm always going to observe and readjust, but I don't think it's the end is going to be much different than what I'm putting forth here. And this stuff is so much more important. Even that PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> this is so much more important than his PowerPoint presentation. Remember how important his PowerPoint presentation was? Where 
you know, I presented the reality org chart, the role of the minions, even understanding the reality is it, still relatively or completely unimportant other than, you know, just the simple understanding of what you need to do for yourself. So understanding is understanding reality is unimportant as long as you understand what you need to do for yourself. Now, I don't know how I don't know that I can agree with that line of thinking, you know, at all. <laughs> Um, I mean, although, but you do have to be true to yourself. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And I'm trying to incorporate that message with the CV Cooties thing here. And again, I, I don't think I'm going to change off this. I really think this is my final, final. It's not the final video <laughs> again or anything. I always go back, look at the screen, do things like that. People are at different levels. But, you know, this is one you might want to sit down for because I... <laughs> This is so important that this is one you might want to sit down for <laughs> if you weren't sitting already. I just can't. I can't be any more clear than this. So we have to move beyond just considering these ideas, these, these ideas we talk about. We need to start working these things into our everyday lives, We're starting right now. Okay. So if you're making eggs, please stop making eggs. Just I don't know how long this will take, probably about 30 minutes. About 30 minutes, yeah. He just said, stop making eggs. Stop making it. This is so important. You know, we need to get on this right now. If you're making eggs, stop making eggs. <laughs> because you cannot make eggs and listen to me at the same time. All right, because I'm going I have to go slowly for you. All right. So slowly that you cannot be making eggs. Right? And and I haven't given you a picture to distract you. So just sit and listen. Just sit and listen. Well, good old Maddie here, quantum of conscience, has got to tell you. Minutes. I mean, this is dead serious, but as you'll see, <laughs> I can't and won't forgo my lame attempts, attempts at jokes. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe you should have, maybe you should have foregone them. <laughs> current reality presentation is a joke. Okay, well, I agree with him on that. The current reality presentation from the assholes is a joke. It doesn't deserve a serious white paper type presentation on its pathetic tactics. All right, so what, what he's saying is the reality doesn't deserve a white paper presentation on its tactics. And, and so a, what, what's a white paper presentation but a research lecture, right? So uh, the reality is – our reality is not worth researching and, and lecturing over is what he's saying. It's not worth doing that. Now imagine interviewing Bozo the Clown for the position of head of neurosurgery and then trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure those two metaphors match that <laughs> I'm not sure the quality of that joke. I'm going to work that those types of jokes <laughs> in the presentation. I just can't help it. Please, try to help it. Got to always, when in doubt, <laughs> laugh at this ridiculousness. All right, another thing I agree with, but the problem is he's not laughing. So what we must do to finally win a game of you versus you. Did you know that you had to beat yourself? <laughs> That's what the title is. You know, what we must do to finally win the game of you versus you, me versus me. There is no us versus them. Okay, I was about this point already. I was already getting a little skeptical about what I was listening to. <laughs> Michael and listen. But when he said there was no us versus them, that really sort of raised my eyebrow, especially with what he says next. <laughs> that is first grade truth crap. First grade truth crap, us versus them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? There's no us versus them. <laughs> That's first grade truth crap. All right. <laughs> the, the military distributing potential vaccines to an unwilling populace. <laughs> That's first grade. That's first grade truth crap. That's first, that's first grade truth crap. Right? Okay. Let's keep going. We're going to get him. We're going to march Hillary to jail. There is no us versus them. That okay. is an illusion. It is a trick of this reality. Okay. And so now he does have a slight point here because there's futility in it. There is futility in playing this game. Right, because this game isn't so much about about winning. 
You know, the game is about keeping moving and not getting trapped, you know, and maintaining some form of dignity and self-worth and being able to, to die ha happy on your own terms. I mean, that's winning this game. It's simply a game of you versus you. Again, again did you know that you had to fight yourself? <laughs> so let's work the CV cooties thing because it's giving itself away. And they're, they're, if they're going to bite off a big piece of the shit sandwich, then they got to give it away on the other side. See, now, I'm not sure I quite understand what he just said there. He said the CV cooties thing is giving itself away. If they're going to bite off a piece of the shit sandwich, then they got to give it away on the other end. Now, I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Why would our controllers be biting any shit sandwich? They'd be eating the finest filet mignon. <laughs> Whatever they wanted to eat, right? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I don't understand that metaphor. It doesn't make any sense. All right. So sometime around 2012 or so, reality started to break down. All right. Did you, now did you catch that? So around 2012, reality started to break down. Um, you want to talk about your first great truth crap? I'm glad you joined the party, Junior. <laughs> Some of us have been doing this since the 70s and earlier since Kennedy and before. I mean, this is not a new game. <laughs> In 2012. That's when reality started to change. right? And that's when, the, according to him, this, what he's about to say, this is when the truth movement was born. Break down. The truthers like me and you, we needed to know what happened. What caused it? My encounter? Or what? 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 doing this mandela effect and all the ridiculous presentations it was happening all this ridiculous presentations was happening to our reality this was 2012 that did this to all of us patients and you know know this that's all bull crap yep all of it <laughs> there is no winning the life game of you versus you until this rabbit hunt is abandoned now did you hear that you cannot win unless you stop playing. The only way to win is to quit, is what he says. That's what he's saying. Till you put the rifle down. Searching for those answers is a reality trap. It's a reality trap to keep searching for answers, you know? <laughs> I mean, listen to this. And one of the endless rabbit holes this reality generation machine presents. And I do like the concept of the reality generation machine. You know, that's kind of what, you know, the matrixy thing. But, um, you know, it does keep perpetuating these these rabbit holes. But what he's saying is you got to give that up. You got to give up rabbit holing, you know, because, well, let's just let I'll just let him do this. <laughs> we are losers in the life game as, as long as we're on the hunt. We are losers as long as we're on the hunt. So... <laughs> too you know now we're losers too and when i heard that i started to really get angry because you know what do i consider myself and my channel you know if you're questioning reality you're a loser right and you're a loser if you're on the hunt but what am i but on the hunt what do i start every episode with <laughs> all the way back to my introduction you know <laughs> but with the <laughs> but with sherlock holmes the the greatest detective not named batman or adrian monk you know <laughs> I am on the hunt, and he just called me a loser, and he just called, I don't know how many members of his 18,000 viewers here losers, or his 65,000 subs. He just called them losers. If you're in a reality tree stand, looking for the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and trying to figure it all out, you're a reality and life loser. And then he just doubled down. Right. If you're sitting in your tree stand, what is your, what is your tree stand if you're on the hunt through this false reality and trying to find your way and get the answers to the questions that have been dogging you your whole life because they don't have answers? You know, you've got you've got itches that need to be scratched. You know, you wouldn't be playing this game if you didn't. All right. Hunting Bugs Bunny is more tangible. <laughs> Hunting Bugs Bunny is more tangible than what you're doing, you loser. You know, if you're looking at that history, if you're looking at all that, you're a loser. You know, and I'm really starting to take it personal. <laughs> now, we needed to learn these lessons in the truth community. We needed to learn that we're losers. You, 
you 18,000 here, you le you need to learn that you're a loser, as do these 60, they got to learn, right? Look at this grumpy, what is this, kabuki, <laughs> just mean and ugly looking, you know? <sighs> All right, and this bully right here is calling you a loser. That's what he's telling you. All right, but you needed to learn it. You needed to learn that you were a loser. But we've learned them now. It's time to move on. Oh, we have, have we? <laughs> It's time to abandon every single stupid truth channel that's looking into this and that and sun simulators and come on, man, move on. All right, now, did you hear that? It's time to give up every stupid little truth channel looking into this and that and sun simulators and it's time to move on? Excuse me? Who is that? That is me. Who's looking into sun simulators but my friends, like, colorblind and, and Beth and Butterbutt and... And my and, and my boy Ch Chief Strongbow, who I haven't seen in a while either, you know, we're little guys, man. I am clawing, I'm fighting, scrapping. I have the most lateral growth rate in the history of YouTube, you know. And here's what going down these rabbit holes, these loser, tre my tree stand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being a, a reality in life loser has gotten me looking at the false paradigm. I am discovering very tangible things about what's going on with this COVID, tying it into psychological warfare, going back with ties to the Chinese into the 1920s, through the, repop through the population reset and the indoctrination program that they instilled in us as new populations. I've been finding very tangible things, doing real research on the street. You know, when was the last time you got out of your chair? Did you ever go into a COVID tent? Did you did you break into a COVID tent? Right? You know, are you crawling around the hospitals? You know, are you hanging down below grates? You know, knocking on doors and pulling on locked doors at churches and stuff? No, you're not doing any of that. You know, you're just sitting in your own, you know, tree stand. You know, wanting to tell people that they should quit all of these truths. Give all up these, these truth channels, right? Because there's... Because th that makes you a loser if you're watching them, right? And that's the thing about it, because I know that there are subs of mine who subscribe to you. And I know that there are subs of mine who really enjoy your content. But what you've just done is told them to unsub me. You know, and I don't, I don't like that. You know, that is, that is gatekeeping at its finest, you disingenuous bastard. <laughs> I mean, who do you think you are? Anything that presents fear. Turn it off. Un okay, now this is where he's telling you what to stay away from, right? You got to stay away from the stuff that presents fear. Turn it off. Unsub immediately. Unsub immediately. Now, here's the thing about fear and the point he wants to make here, right? There is a lot of this fear mongering, fear porn out there, and it is something to be avoided. But the name of the game is knowing which information to, st to stay away from, which information to pursue. How to navigate your way in this maritime law world. <laughs> right? That's what we have to do. Right? But it's up to us as free thinkers to find that. Right? You know, you don't have the authority to tell people what what they should that they should not pay attention to anything that has fear involved in it. Because there are many, many things to be afraid of. Right? As I was saying, you know, this you know, Trump is going to do the military. I mean, am I going to be able to tell the National Guard when they want to roll up and give me a vaccine against my will? You know, <laughs> that there is no us versus them, that the them isn't real, that that's all fake? Uh-uh. You, I mean, fear is a very useful tool, and it helps to know what to be afraid of. But to know what to be afraid of, you have to research it. You have to stay connected to it in some way to unsub immediately, to forget all of that. That is terrible, terrible advice. That is dangerous advice in these times. I'm sorry to say, all right? And it is really disheartening to hear that coming from a quote unquote truther channel and one with your reputation and success. I mean, this is unbelievable that you would tell people to unsub. And these are the same people, how did they find you? but by going on rabbit hole hunting. You know, unless you're force-fed your audience from some other source, 
you know, and I'm not going to even begin to speculate on that because I'm I'm almost done with you. There's just a few other things I want to get into here, somewhere about the 17 minute mark. And again, he wants to use this like fear. That's like his caveat. It's going to be like his defense. You know, it's the fear mongering. I mean, it's the fear mongering. I mean. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he means. <laughs> right, so, so he spent like the last like 13 minutes or so underlying his, you know, the last eight years of his research and how nothing is real, right? And this is why paying attention to these other truther channels who are looking into this and that and sun simulators and, you know, and I, as I was saying, I happen to think the sun simulator is a brilliant idea and it actually plays pretty well into some of the things I've been discovering in the Masters of Reality thing that I've been doing. You know, with the history of spectroscopy and stuff, and glass, and the uses for glass. You know, there are connections here to be made. And, you know, for him to be dismissive of this type of information is just, uh, you know, and to act, not only to be dismissive of it, it's one thing if he has that opinion, right? But to actively tell people to unsub. So it's finally time to turn off every truth channel that the moment they start fear mongering, don't ever go back, unsub. Um, you know, I still sub to some because I have to, I kind of figure I have to keep, <laughs> right? and there's, that's the gatekeeping right there. It's time to, it's time to get rid of all of them. The minute they start fear monitoring. And again, and earlier he said all the other stuff like, you know, sun simulators and, you know, everything that applies, mud, flood, flat earth, you know, goes right on down the line. That's what he's inferring or applying there. Right. Right here. He's talking strictly about the fear mongering, but really it's about controlling the information. He just said he's the gatekeeper. You get rid of all that, but not me. You know, do as I say, not as I do. You know, that's megalomania. That's like the beginning of like a cultish type mentality, you know, I think. You know, that's what he's trying to get at, right? I still have to. I'm going to monitor. But you, you got to get rid of them all. <laughs> right? And so, you know, I just couldn't believe it. He wants, he wants people to pay zero attention to independent researchers, small channels like myself, who, like I say, who work very hard to maintain, you know, a modest sub rate. You know, channels like Miss Havisham, who's doing great research over there in England, hitting these old churchyards and 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 now these uh, megalithic rock structures she's finding from these earthquakes and things, right? She's uh, unbelievable boots on the ground stuff out there, you know, and uh, like Tom Carberry and, you know, even Mich Michelle Gibson and small channels like this, you know, he wants you to, to, to ditch us. And I'm not having any of that. Ditch him. <laughs> right. So anyway, I had I just had to do this in good conscience, like I said, because I don't think quantum of conscience is playing on the level. You know, because I don't think quantum of conscience really has one at all. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't, I don't know how long, how long this one will be up, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, please be wary of this type of stuff. I mean, he is, he's got some good tricks. You know, he's got a nice, smooth voice. You know, but he is gatekeeping, no doubt about it. And he does not think you're smart, right? He wants to control what you think. All right, that's all I have to say about him. <laughs> Until the next one. Cheers, guys.